Returning from a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce, Calgary Mayor Priscilla Burns stepped into her office and closed the door behind her. She exhaled a long, slow breath, leaning against the door. A faded image of herself reflected off the floor-to-ceiling window across the room from her, the natural light outside having dimmed only slightly as the sun set. She removed her coat and hung it on the back of the door, along with her purse, then rushed to her desk to regroup before leaving for the weekend. Wiggling the mouse on her desk, she pulled up the next week's Outlook calendar. A creak caught her attention, and she jerked her head up in time to see two figures darken her doorway. Her heart racing, she shoved her chair back from her desk and stood, pressing a hand to her chest. The figures were dressed head to toe in black and wearing sunglasses. Odd, considering it was almost dark. Who are you? How did you get in here? When they didn't respond or remove their sunglasses, her pulse quickened. She reminded herself to stay calm, but she was so taken aback by their appearance that her questions came out more accusatory than neutral. Slowing her breath, she examined the figures trying to remember every detail for when she spoke to the police. Because Calgary Police Services would definitely be hearing from her, the figures wore almost identical crisp black pants and black pea coats. One tall, one short, a man and a woman. They almost look like they could be security detail. Oh, God, did they have guns? But if they were security, someone must have sent them to protect her. They weren't her usual team, though. She opened her mouth to ask what happened when the man stepped towards her but his closer presence caused her to pause. Mayor Burns. His voice had a cold tone to it. We have an urgent matter to discuss, one that demands your immediate attention. She sucked in a breath. Something had happened. They were there to protect her. She exhaled, not realizing she'd been holding her breath. Taking a seat at her desk, she gestured to the chairs in front of her, inviting the man and woman to do the same. The woman stepped up level with the man, and they both crossed their arms over their chests. What the hell? So this wasn't about her safety? How dare they barge into her office? Her jaw tightened, a mix of defiance and apprehension spreading throughout her body. Once again, she stood, trying to exert some sense of power. Mirroring the intruder's postures, she crossed her arms. This isn't how I do business. Either tell me why you're here or leave my office. The woman chuckled. <laughs> you might want to reconsider Mayor Burns. The voice came out deeper than the mayor had expected, but she was still certain she was dealing with a man and a woman. The fate of this city rests in your hands. Your cooperation is imperative if you wish to see it thrive. Mayor Byrne's eyes darted between the two figures, her mind racing to decipher their intentions. She stood tall, finding strength in her position and not wanting them to see she was rattled. I won't be intimidated. My decisions are based on what's best for this city and its people, not threats or coercion. Neither the man nor the woman responded. Tension hung heavy in the room, the atmosphere electrified by the unspoken clash of wills. Although the hairs on the back of her neck rose, Mayor Burns held firm, waiting for either of her visitors to respond. The man spoke again, not changing his posture. Consider the consequences, Mayor Burns. The future is a fragile thing, easily shattered. A wise leader knows when to make the right choice. What choice are you asking me to make? You know as well as I do that I don't make the decisions around here. As the mayor, it was her responsibility to provide leadership to the city council, but ultimately, the council made the decisions through long-standing democratic procedures. Even these thugs had to know that.